one of the things I'll say today is that universities and districts can't do this alone. We need to see, in our experience, we need to see a partnership between universities and districts and states um, if we want to make this uh, affordable, if we want to make this sustainable, and if we want to have the impact that student learning we now know we can have. Um, to say a little bit about our own work here, <coughs> was, that a, was that a question? No, no. sir. Okay. So I'm getting a little feedback, so I, if, um, I might mistake that feedback comment. Uh, can, can you wait just one second? I'm going to make one sure, more yeah. check. Okay, Dr. Tozer, go ahead. Oh, we can't hear you. Okay, Dr. Tozer, you'll go ahead. Are we ready? Yes. Does that sound okay? Yeah. I'll, I'll assume it does. Um, we're now looking at the slide called Vision and Work at UIC, the Center for Urban Educational Leadership. This is a center here in our College of Education uh, that was begun to continue to expand and support the work that we do in preparing school leaders. Our fundamental goal, and this is a goal that I would recommend for every single state and one that Illinois has now adopted, is to lead the improvement, is to develop principals who can lead the improvement of preschool through 12 learning in high need schools as a rule rather than as a rare exception. Now we put it that way because we've known for 35 years that really good principals could dramatically improve student learning in the, in the poorest income neighborhoods, uh, no matter what the ethnicity of the kids in the neighborhood it is. We've seen those principles come along, we've documented it as a field for 35 years, but nobody was producing those principles routinely. We sort of acted as if these were gifted artists instead of acting as if this is a profession that we can actually build and, and improve and produce. Um, we work collaboratively with other institutions to do this, as I, say, as I say, and the idea is to produce such leaders at scale, not to produce an occasional showcase school, but to, the real challenge is, can we improve student learning across all neighborhoods in all districts? And I don't think there's a single theory for doing this that, that is tenable, that doesn't include strong school leadership as a part of that theory. So while I will not say that strong school leadership is a silver bullet that can do it by itself, I will say that there's no good theory or practice for improving schools in low-income neighborhoods or improving struggling schools that doesn't include strong leadership as an important ingredient for that. Um, I'll move on to uh, the next slide. If it's not moving, let me see why that is. There. I should. We should be looking at one that says program results. I just want to give you some quick program results that we documented, it's a year and a half ago now, of the first 148 completers of our program, 100 became principals in urban schools. 80% of those were retained as of the time that we wrote that. That continues to this day. Our retention rate is 80%. The remainder are assistant principals, and 20 of them have been promoted to system level leaders at charter and neighborhood schools. As many of you know, Chicago has a large charter school um, uh, proportion, and many of our principals are snapped up by charter schools. Um, for the last 11 years, we've had 99% placement in administrative positions as principals or assistant principals. And this is terribly important to recognize because that makes this kind of programming very cost effective. Uh, prior to these legislative changes in Illinois, um, only 15% of the people who went through our principal preparation programs uh, became principals. And I know from my background experience in North Carolina that North Carolina also has um, a, a majority of people who go through its, its historical standard master's principal prep programs who do not become principals. So the investment in leadership there is one that we don't necessarily get a return on unless we develop programs that are focused on preparing principals who, in fact, do become principals. Um, we have uh, the highest eligibility pass rate in Chicago Public Schools assessments. This is an interesting thing that districts can do. The state license in Illinois isn't good enough to be a principal in Chicago. You have to pass a higher bar assessment. The state legislature uh, passed a law to enable this. 
So in Chicago, a state certificate won't enable you to be a principal. And in fact, two thirds of those people who are certified by the state who take the Chicago bar exam actually fail that exam. Um, over 90% of the candidates from our program uh, do pass that exam. I wrote that there's a mixed blessing in the fact that our people are being promoted within the system so rapidly. And the truth is, the principalship is the highest leverage position that we know about to improve student learning by working closely with teachers within a school building to improve instruction. Um, when you promote a principal to a higher level in the district, often they have less power to improve student learning than when they were in the building. Uh, we like that our principals are recognized and promoted, but we also um, would like to see a deeper, richer pipeline so that, um, uh, so that that doesn't cost the school to have those promotions. Um, I, an early program result that told us uh, fairly early that we were really on to something here was looking at um, schools that were 90% uh, uh, African American uh, and 90% low income. And what we noticed was that our schools were four times as likely to appear in the top 10% of such schools um, as, as regular schools were in the system. In fact, out of the first 10 principals we prepared for the high minority, high, uh, uh, low income schools, um, only one of them performed at the system median. Um, all the others performed well above the system median. So we began to believe early on that we were onto something here when four of our people actually performed in the top 10%, that is to say their students performed in the top 10% out of the 184 such schools in the Chicago system. We also noticed that we had a profound impact early on on kids at the bottom of a school. So on the left hand, what you see on the, the document that says UIC mid-program results is a, a graph that demonstrates that from 2009, 2010, um, the bottom quartile in Chicago public schools, that's all the elementary schools, that was over 500 of them, 52% of the kids in the system were in the bottom quartile statewide. Um, the following year, 51%. So that wasn't much of a movement. Whereas in our schools, all of our elementary schools at that time, 73% when our principals took over were in, in 2009, were in the bottom quartile. By the following year, only 60% were in the bottom quartile. So we tend to take over the highest need schools in Chicago because that's what we're designed to do. But we also tend to find that over time we surpass those schools, uh, the other schools in, in terms of our student performance in our schools. So for example, what we saw in 2011 was that the majority of our principal schools at the elementary level, and we named the schools here, were significantly outperforming schools in the system as indicated by the tan bar across the middle of the page that's titled Growth in Average Overall Achievement in 2011. Um, we began documenting at that time how our first year principals were doing and found out that even our first year principals students were outperforming the system. So were our second, so were our third, and so on up the ladder. If one of our principals didn't outperform the system, they don't appear on this particular graph um, in 2011 simply because we didn't want to embarrass a principal by putting the name uh, of a school there that was below the system in average. But what we found was that the majority of our schools uh, in fact, 80% of our schools were outperforming system averages already by 2011. Um, at the high schools, um, our, our principals tend to take the most difficult high schools in the system. We prepare them for that. They're, they are chosen by local school councils instead of the way Chicago works is we have a school board for every school. And that local school council has a tendency to, to choose our people for these higher need schools. So we now have 20 high schools run by UIC principals. Uh, both charter and comprehensive, including these large neighborhood high schools, these buildings that were built early in the 20th century, like Clemente and Wells and Kennedy that are famous for being resistant to change. Our principals have had a profound impact on that. And in fact, um, they tend to outperform their system level schools at, at, on virtually all metrics. And in fact, three years ago, Kennedy, which was one of the really resistant to change schools, um, led the system in its ACT gains for one year. Um, our metrics don't always produce wins, and I want to emphasize this. Um, the point of taking metrics seriously is captured in the title of a book that just came out in 2015 
by Tony Brack and Luis Gomez, a very important book for educators called Learning to Improve. And essentially what they're saying is we have to really be honest about our metrics if we're going to in fact address the places where we're weak. So I'll tell you, it's not the case that 100% of our principals are improving schools. And we're trying to figure out why it is that some of our principals aren't moving the needle in schools. And the only way we're going to figure that out is by collecting the data and trying to do an honest analysis of that. So we collect the metrics on our school performance and principal performance, not just as measures of progress, but uh, also how can we improve what our principals are doing. And so this is a, a central part of our approach. Um, this is interesting at the high school level. You notice the blue line there. This is called five-year trends in CPS ninth grade on track. It turns out that you can predict who's going to fail and who's going to drop out of high school with a high rate of accuracy by tracking the freshman success rates, or what we call freshman on track. Uh, at the time we did this little study in 2012, um, UIC-led schools, there were only 13 high schools, and you'll notice the blue, blue line. They started in high schools where only 56, 57 percent of the kids were on track to graduate at the end of freshman year. That was the look. That was much lower than citywide average, much lower than non-UIC schools. By the end of that four-year period, UIC led the rest of the system in terms of freshmen on track, and it pushed it up to um, well over 70. 25% and in fact it's increased even since then. This, these, this upward trend has continued. Um, why do we get the results is of interest to every state and certainly North Carolina is not the only state paying attention to this. Um, part of it is the fact that we've been in a close district partnership with Chicago Public Schools and Chicago Public Schools has very clear standards for assessing principals and in fact we adopt those standards as part of our principal preparation program. Moreover, you, we have district paid full year residencies. This sounds expensive, but of course in medical education, if you tried to take away internships and residencies from medical preparation, the field of medicine would rebel tremendously. Uh, if you tried to take away student teaching from teacher education, the teacher ed profession would rebel. But we've acted for the entire history of principal preparation as if we could produce principals without significant leadership field experience. So one of the big turns in the field right now is beginning to fund residencies or internships in which candidates for the principalship actually have to lead or co-lead instructional leadership in schools. We also work with the district on an overall strategy to improve the pipeline of applicants because uh, applications matter. So the key program features five, I think, that really set us apart from the rest and have, have led to our getting so much national recognition. One is high selectivity. Nationwide principal preparation is largely open admissions. Anybody who's a teacher can get into a principal preparation program. Um, we have uh, we have changed that in Illinois by law. Every every program that uh, pr that offers a principal license has to, in fact, demonstrate selectivity of its candidates. Um, we also focus on um, not just credentialing candidates. The client for our programs isn't a graduate student who wants a credential. The client for our programs is the public school kid who needs a strong leader in the school. So we're working on continuous improvement all the time to see are we producing the results in schools that are necessary, and if we're not, let's be upfront about it and tell people what, that we're not and, and what it is that we can do about it. Third is this clinical intensity, a full year um, of residency in which they are supervised by uh, the equivalent of field-based supervisors in student teaching, in this case it's leadership coaches, and in fact we continue leadership coaching after they receive the license because 99% of our people take leadership roles and they're in a perfect position to be coached after they get the license um, uh, and after the residency. And finally, we have to be serious about assessment rigor for these programs. We counsel out at least 10% of our candidates after we've admitted them. So we've been very selective at the front end. We think we've got the right people, um, but like the National Football League, we find out that our, our drafting processes aren't always uh, good predictors of success, and we have to counsel some people out. Uh, I think we have to have the courage to do that because it's, it's kids' educations and futures that are at stake. I must also say that we've done this not through state funding largely, but through 13 years of external funding. 
Um, that is to say, the state funding is enough to support a normal program. The things that we've done over and above a normal program, like the research and like the leadership coaching, we've appealed to a broad range of, of funders locally and nationally, uh, and they're really our supporters. They are sustained funders who stick with us and make sure uh, that we're producing the results that we're designed to get. However, I should also say, um, if you, the next slide says your system, any system, is perfectly designed to obtain the results that you're obtaining. Uh, the author there, Carr, uh, is the person who wrote the paper telling us we don't really know who originally said that quote. It's a famous quote, and we all know it. Your system, any system, is perfectly designed to obtain the results you're obtaining. Nobody knows exactly who said it first. Um, in any case, uh, what we discovered in Illinois, according to the Business Roundtable analysis, was that um, as there's a Business Roundtable member uh, of our task force that created the new Illinois law for principals, and that individual said that the entire state could have full year, full paid residencies, and it would be a rounding error in the state education budget. Um, the, the reason that that's true is because you don't need that many principals, uh, and I'll talk in a minute about the scale of principals that we need in the nation and at our states. Higher education today is part of the results system of the nation's schools. There's no question that higher ed plays a role in not getting the results that we ought to get in our nation's schools. And we often point the finger at the wrong place. We said, darn it, these teachers just aren't good enough. But the reality is a beginning teacher can only be a beginning teacher. The truth is that our, our teacher ed programs are probably doing a good enough job if those teachers go into schools where a principal knows how to organize a school for adult learning. First and foremost for our principals, their task is the school must be a place of adult learning if we want kids to learn. Because novice teachers do not yet have the skill set uh, to be able to um, produce the kind of learning experiences for low income kids that are necessary, but they can develop that skill set when principals make their school sites of adult learning first and foremost. Um, principal pre preparation, therefore, is key uh, in any uh, system, Illinois or elsewhere. Uh, the research has been very clear for over a decade that leadership is second to only to classroom instruction among all school-related factors that contribute to what students learn at school. Um, what's interesting about that is you're never going to get wall-to-wall high-quality classroom instruction <coughs> without high-quality leadership in a school. The school leader hires and fires, uh, or counsels people out at least, uh, the school leader develops the talent of the teachers in that building. As it turns out, the second most important thing, namely leadership, is absolutely essential to get the first most important thing, which is high quality instruction. So there's something a little misleading about that, about that claim. Um, the, uh, one of the great uh, sources of information on this is uh, a book called Organizing Schools for Improvement that helps us understand that classroom instruction is a product of, of um, organizations of schools, not simply a product of where the teacher went to get the teacher certification degree. Um, just to uh, underscore that point, if in fact what we want on the right hand side of the chart that says within school improvement of student learning, that's the title of the chart, within school improvement, what you'll see is that student engagement and learning on the right to, to be improved at a profound level requires an improvement in teaching and instruction. We're not going to get teaching and instruction improved in the school without developing the organizational resources, the organizational capacity within a school to support improved instruction. It doesn't happen simply by telling teachers they need to teach better. We need to build organizational supports. Our program teaches principals what it means to build the organizational supports in a school so that instruction improves. I'm going to skip the slide that says developing school leaders at UIC. It's an easy one for you to go back and see on your own. And I'm going to ask the question, can institutions of higher ed, if you go to that one, can IHEs or institutions of higher ed do this work at scale? Uh, the good news is that doing this, pre preparing principles for all schools at scale is actually doable because there's only 100,000 principals in the whole U.S. versus 4 million teachers versus 300,000 physicians. In Illinois, we only have to replace about or less than 400 principals annually. And we have almost 30 institutions of higher ed producing principals. 
So the truth is, we only need four, an, enough new principals annually to match half the size of my high school class. This is why the business roundtable uh, executive said, this is a rounding error on the state education budget. We just have to decide to do this, and Illinois has in fact begun to decide to do this and is putting things in place. The bad news is that higher ed is in many ways resistant to change, and the current funding and incentive structures are part of that resistance. You don't find higher ed out um, demonstrating to change its principal preparation programs. Um, largely, that kind of pressure is coming from states and districts who, who need better principals. I've listed a few of the obstacles to change in higher ed. I won't spend time on that today, but those of you who want to ask further questions about that, I can certainly be reached and be happy to talk about that. One of them, of course, is the myth of teacher talent. Um, it's not about getting more talented teachers. It's about building schools as organizations that develop instructional quality among teachers um, that need to be de developed. There is a nice moment here of, uh, of that I can say about um, ESSA, the new National Funding Reauthorization of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. There is new funding recommended in this for states to be able to support principal preparation at a new level. No child left behind more than a decade ago left principals out for the formula altogether. The new ESSA Act is, uh, it is very explicit about state support for principals. Um, Quality school system leader preparation disrupts current systems of inequity. It, it does that by, in fact, improving student outcomes for kids from all uh, ethnic and income backgrounds. And we're using our own documentation to demonstrate this. I'm going to show you the, another couple of slides and then we'll wrap up. Um, this one says since 2007, Chicago has accounted for almost all statewide NAEP games, the National Association of Education Progress. The state of Illinois has actually stayed flat or declined at every grade level. What you find here for fourth grade math is that the Chicago line down at the bottom of the page has been nothing but increasing um, on NAEP since 2008, whereas the rest of the state on fourth grade has had very slight increases for fourth grade. Um, fourth grade is one of the, the better performers for the rest of the state. Um, and then if you go to the next one that says fourth grade reading in 2006, just want you to note the colors on this because I'm going to show you a sheet. I don't know if you have it in color. If you do not, then this won't, uh, <laughs> this won't work. Um, what, what you see here is that in fourth grade reading in 2006, Chicago lagged behind. That's shaded pink because Chicago lagged behind the rest of the state. If you go to the next slide, what you see over the period 2006 through 2014, um, by 2014, Chicago outperformed the rest of the state in raw scores in reading and in mathematics for all kids below the re free and reduced lunch line and all kids above the free and reduced lunch line. This was for white kids, black kids, and Latino kids, the three largest population groups in the state. Chicago was outperforming its counterparts in the rest of the state. In one decade, Chicago um, uh, achieved, matched, and surpassed the rest of the state in fourth grade. And as it turns out on the very next chart, that's slide 23, the very complicated chart, you don't need to see the numbers. This is true for every grade level tested that Chicago went from lagging behind the rest of the state to now exceeding the rest of the state at third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade levels. This is also true on the ACT. This is because um, new leaders for new schools and University of Illinois at Chicago put over 300 new principals into the system. We don't know how much of the variance that accounted for, so I want to be honest about that. We can't say it was all about the principals. But certainly, any effort to explain why Chicago now outperforms the rest of the state for every demographic group has to include Chicago's intensive investment in school leadership. How are we continuing to track our own impact? Um, we're continuing to measure Chicago versus Illinois achievement and trying to understand why have we seen these dramatic improvements in Chicago but not the rest of the state? What's the role of principals in these findings? and just how cost-effective is it to, pro to produce principles the way we produce them. Last slide is just how you can reach me if you need to, and I think I've gone slightly over my time, so thank you very, very much for your patience.